Okay, okay, class, I just want to give you some tips on perspective. So this will be a, a video on perspective and how to start it. Um, I want to go through different types of perspective. This is simply one point perspective. Um, it will have a single vanishing point. The vanishing point is here. It is located on the horizon line, okay? Or what could be also considered your eye level, all right? So... Um, let's just say for argument's sake that I am standing on a train track someplace. And although we know the train track is made up of two parallel, you know, lengths of metal um, along with, you know, wood strips, when you see them in perspective, and I'm using pen here, Actually, in one point, in one point, they appear. These two diagonal line, these two diagonal lines, recede to a vanishing point. So, what we're really talking about is train track seen from above, that would look like this, right? But in seen in perspective, one point perspective, they will recede at a vanishing point on the horizon line. Um, you can use this same set of rules, that same vanishing point, for doing other things in the scene. Let's try this. Keeping the lines perfectly vertical. Now I have telephone poles. Now I have a fence. Um, maybe there's a little gravel that separates the telephone poles from the train tracks. You know, the track is wide, so it's got perhaps two lines. One. Two. As they reach the vanishing point, the horizontal lines that make up the railroad wooden slats will appear closer together. You could also use vanishing points like this to possibly, to use it in one point perspective, let's just say that this was by an orchard. So you can still use the diagonal. Here's the top of the tree, top of the tree, bottom of the bottom. Bottom of the tree. And the trunk of the tree sits in there. It might overlap again. And they would recede as they come closer to the horizon line. And the vanish, you know, the vanishing point takes them there.
now. I'm afraid you won't be able to see that. Let's try that. So what I've done now is I've actually stuck a building. using the one point perspective and I can also use that that vanishing point to establish where the windows are I'm going to use it now to change that train track thing I drew there to become a door Now, if there was a, you know, let's say this is a train station, maybe there's a, a walkway up to the tracks. I'm going to change that style of roof, which I do. Suppose it was brick. Now I'm using pen so you can see me work. But what you do notice is that if I start my line here and I'm careful with it, I'm trying to be as straight as I can without using a ruler. That one was a little wimpy. Better. Better. So all my diagonals, my orthogonals, are emanating from here, from this single vanishing point in one point perspective. Now, since it's one point, that means that um, this side of the building right here, this here, is flush to the picture plane. So in other words, in two point perspective, what we were drawing the other day, your building was set up like this. If that, that's a top view, and here's your paper. So that's how that was set up. So the corner was against the face of the paper. In one point perspective, what you have here this. is flush to the picture plane. So in other words, it's like that. So that's a, a kind of a one point perspective, a little bit of a, 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 a how to on how to just set it up. The train tracks is the way it's always been taught. I'm trying to draw around my phone, I apologize. So I'm not being super neat, but if you use the rules, the rules will give you exactly what you need. The lines will recede as they go up towards the vanishing point. You know, if there's sidewalk here, these are going to remain horizontal. They will diminish as they get closer to the vanishing point. So. That's one point perspective. I'll be back with more.